power to help you. But if you break them, you'll suffer. It's entirely up to you. That's all, Gates. Take him away. One to 14 years. We're forging a 10 dollar check. That's pretty stiff, Pat. That's the law. Tell me something. Don't you ever get tired trying to straighten these fellas out? They come and they keep on coming. They go and a lot of them come back. But you keep on hoping, believing that every new man that comes in here is your personal responsibility. They all need a little help until they get adjusted. This Gates boy didn't act as though he wanted any help. How would you have him act? You think he should be glad to be here? Even the probationer investigator's report showed that he forged a check because his mother was sick and needed a doctor. Oh, now, now, I didn't send him up here. I know. I'd like to meet a criminal someday who admitted he committed a crime because he wanted to, not because he had to. We all use defense mechanisms of one sort or another. Yours is being hard-boiled. So is yours. And what's yours? I'm not talking, Pat. I know my rights. Then why don't you exercise them? You've been looking for your own little parish for some time. I happen to know one's been offered you, a pretty rich one, where you could live on the fat of the land. Not with my digestion. Tell me, why did you turn it down? Well, the news got around. The boys are used to me here. A few of them wrote letters to the board, letters of protest. I know. Come here. Where else could I always be sure of a congregation that size? I'm afraid you're a hopeless case, Father Joe. Sure I am. Anyway, Warden, thanks for writing one of those letters yourself. Another one. for you, Red. Well, well, I was beginning to think I was a leper. 418, 2. Check. 417, 2. Check. Up there. 416, 3. Check. Make your own bed and don't leave the water running and use your own toothbrush. Ah, shut up. Oh, got a sense of humor, huh? Well, you and me are going to get along all right. What'd they get you for? Forgery. What'd they give you? One to 14. And I'm 24. White, American, have no scars or birthmarks. I'm an only child, and I've had four years of college. Now, is there anything else you want to know? Now, don't get fresh, or I'll slap your ears down. Oh, yes, my name's Gates. Johnny Gates. Why, you ain't even got a name. All you got is a number. 14380. You think it's just printed on there, and you can leave it behind you with your coat when you get out of here. Well, you can't, kid, because it's branded right on your skin. One to 14 years, eh? You better figure on about seven. This board don't know any smaller numbers. So you're gonna do a seven-year stretch. When you get out, you'll be an ex-con and nobody will want any part of you. Somebody swipes an apple and you're back again, a two-time loser. 
And you get out again, somebody frames you, and you come back a three-time loser. Cut it out. All right, kid, don't get excited. I guess I forgot how jumpy guys are when they first come in here. Let's forget it. Yeah, have a smoke. Yeah. Hey, does that guy do that all the time? Singing, Jim? Yeah. Except when he's asleep. Well, don't he know any other tunes? Oh, you won't be bothered with him long. He's being promoted tonight to the death house. Hey, Jim, cut it out. You're breaking my heart. See that? His master's voice. How can I miss? Ed, where'd you put the gates going? Gates? The lad that came in this morning. Oh, 14380. He's in with Manson. With Manson? Well, I had to put him somewhere. But why with Manson? I only work here, Father. I've kept men out of Manson's cell for the past two years just to please you. This prison was built for 1,280 inmates, and we've got 3,296. Yes, I know, Ed. It's not your fault. Will you please arrange for me to talk to him? Right. Get the gates, boy. You're wasting your time, Father. He's just another tough kid. Manson will make him a tougher one. The man is innocent until he's proved guilty. But according to the Father, he's still innocent. Well, if it ain't the house detective. Come on. Where to? Maybe he wants to take you out to tea. Shut up, you. Come on. What's the idea? The chaplain wants to see you. What for? You know, you don't have to go to the chaplain. Look, you keep, you'll be back in solitary. Ah, shut up. I'm telling the kid his rights. The chaplain can't send for a prisoner. The prisoner sends for the chaplain that wants him, and you don't want him, do you? Are you coming? No. You two boys ought to do fine together. While you last. That fly a kite. That's right, kid. Well, Father, he don't want to see you. Red Manson, eh? I'm afraid you're wasting your time, Father. I have lots of it. Speak of the devil. Remember, kid, he can't make you do nothing. May I come in? I wouldn't. sent for you. To meet you, son. Yeah? Yes. I always like to meet new men as soon as I can after they come in. Sort of try to help them get adjusted. Adjusted? To this? Sure, that's his racket, kid. Making things easy for cons. Fixing them nice, soft jobs. Tell them what swell fellas they are. Because he wants to help them? Nah. Because he wants to make stool pigeons out of them. We don't need any help. I know you don't, Red. So he told you all about himself. How very smart he is. What a great success. A model for you to follow. Why, you... Take a good look at this man, son. Do a little thinking on your own. You don't tell me what he's said since you've been in here. I know. I know him. I know all about him. Sure, he's a great success. He's smart. He's so smart, he's in here a three loser. Anything about you, Johnny, except what I saw in your papers. But I think you're much too sensible to be taken in by a red messenger. If you're not, heaven help you. Look out, Father. He's not going to hurt anybody. Well, son, it's up to you. Would you like to come along with me? Sure. What have I got to lose? Fine. Let's go. <coughs> I'll be waiting here when you get back, kid. I'll say you will. Your father, Joe. Can I talk to you a minute? Sure, Bill. What's well, on your mind? Well, I had a letter from my wife, and she's been talking to the judge who, who sent me up. She said that maybe he might give me a parole recommend if you'd write to him. I did yesterday, Bill. And I have a letter half written to the wife on my desk. Oh, dear. Thanks, Father. Hello, Father Joe. Hello, Charlie. Sit down, 
Johnny. Thanks, I'll stand. This is strictly off the record, Johnny. Won't commit you to a thing. Sit down, son. I'm listening. I don't smoke. Johnny, you don't belong here. I'm here. Yes, for your first mistake. Frankly, I don't think you deserve what they gave you. Too bad you weren't there to plead my case. Of course, with you, your term's not very long. With good behavior, it might be even shorter. But even so, the days can be pretty long. One year can seem like 20. And where does all this build-up get me? Because, Johnny, I want to show you what you're up against. You can leave this place a confirmed criminal. You'll meet a lot of them here. They might put ideas in your head that you never would have dreamed of. On the other hand, you might leave here a good, solid, contented citizen. It's all up to you. We haven't much to offer, but I want to tell you what we have. We have men here who teach. They teach printing, office work, mechanics, architecture, almost anything you might be interested in. You could even study French or Spanish if you wanted to. We even have one man here who used to be a professor. He teaches sociology, economics. I majored in them. That's splendid. I must bring you two together. Anyhow, that'll give you a general idea of what we have. Think it over. Yeah, thanks. Can I go back now? Yeah, sure. Run along. Oh, say. Do you play handball? Some? Why? Well, I'm pretty good at it. I find it hard to get competition around here. Would you like to take me on sometime? Maybe. Fine, I'll look forward to it. And it's Henley, Johnny. Don't you think it might be a good idea if I wrote your mother? Mothers do worry, you know. And I think if she knew you were getting along fine and planning to spend your time at something worthwhile, she might be kind of proud. Proud? Proud of what? That her son has a chance to be teacher's pet in the pen? Don't make me laugh. And I mustn't become a criminal, huh? I must go out of here all sweetness and light. Well, you try walking the streets for months. No job, no money. A mother dying, maybe, because you can't get medicine or a doctor for her. Then for a $10 check, I get sent up for one to 14 years for $10. Yeah, and a number branded on me that'll never come off. And you're gonna help me, huh? Well, what can you do? What can anybody do now? I'm a con. And when I get out of here, I'll be an ex-con, and I'll be walking the same streets. No money, no job, no hope, no future. Can you change any of that? Sure, I'll get set up again, and I'll be a two-time loser. And you know it, don't you? Come on, tell me I'm wrong. Can you tell me I'm wrong? Yes, Johnny, if you'll let me. It's up to you. Ah. Uh, thanks for waiting. Just leave your key under the mat. Well, my boy, am I glad to see you. Now, just make yourself comfortable and we can have a nice heart-to-heart -heart talk. I've been looking over your papers and I find out that you're not the kind of a boy that belongs in here. Now, I want you to let me make things nice and easy for you during your stay here. Now, I can teach you how to box or we can have a swell game of handball. Good old handball. And, of course, you're going to our school. Now, we got the arithmetic. We got geography, and we got sociology. Now, there's something, sociology. Unless you want to go for a little architecture. You didn't fall for that stuff, did you? No. And a boy, and a boy. Because all I want is to be left alone. Why, sure. Sure. Yeah? All right. Mike Falari gets it. Mike, you're going. Mike Valeri swings. Mike Valeri getting it. Valeri gets the rope. They're going to swing Valeri. Valeri gets it. Oh, I swing Mike. I beat that rat kid. They can beat any rabbit. Ever see a man get hung, kid? 
No, and I don't want to see it. Well, the guy that's getting it, he don't see it either. Because he's got a black cap over his head. But he feels that nice thick rope when it wraps around his neck. It tightens. Nice and slow. They ain't in no hurry. Finally, the warden waves his hand, and the guy is doing a dance on air. Every one of them's got a new routine, and they never repeat themselves. Shut up! Shut up! Now, you ought to be able to take it. Sorry, Mike. The governor's refused to grant a reprieve. How much time, Warden? About an hour. Isn't there any chance at all? Would you ask Father Joe to come in? I've already sent for Father Joe, Mike. I killed her. Sure I did. But I didn't mean to. I loved her. I know, Mike. I loved her. That's why I did it. I thought there was another fellow. I went crazy. And I didn't mean to kill her. When I saw her laying there, I tried to call her back. But I couldn't. I couldn't, Father Joe. There, there, Mike. Don't think about it. There was a man who died for us. That our sins might be forgiven. You won't leave me, will you, Father Joe? No, Mike, I won't leave you. You'll be right there till late. Till it's over. I'll be right there, Mike. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I've got to pray. Oh, I don't know how. Tell me how to pray. I've got to pray.
temptation, but deliver us from evil, for of thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. They sprung the trap on Mike. Mike to Larry Swan. Mike got it. He just done his dance. Mike's done for. He's gone. He's finished. Well, he got out. guys I've got in the chorus just won't give. And if we're ever going to have a show, you better come over and help me get them going. All right, Dizzy. I'll be right over. Oh, that's swell, Father. That's swell. Say, I'll go over and line them up. Woo! I knew everything was going to be hunky-dory. What a show. What a show. I want you all to pay attention. I'll tell you why. Father Joe is coming over here, and I want you fellas to do the best you can. You hear? All right, the glamour girls all line up on this side of the stage. Everybody. Now, follow me. Here's the first step. I want you all to walk on graceful, see? Like this. Now, you think you can do that? All right, try it. Everybody. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, wait a minute, fellas, wait a minute. Don't give me that lock step. Now, here's the next step. Ready? One, two, kick. One, two, kick. One, two, kick. One, two, kick. Wait a minute, fellas, what is this? What are you, a bunch of cloud hoppers here? What's the idea? Wait a minute, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding, fellas. I'm trying to do the best I can. Get back. Now, right here, I want you all to take your hands in the air and swoon like that. Come on. One, two, swing. That's right, in tempo, while I dance. See? Come on, get them up in the air, the way you had them when they caught you. That's the idea! Oh, wait a minute, fellas, relax. Here comes Father Joe. Mail that for me, please. All right, Father. We'll pick it up from where we left off yesterday. My specialty. Oh, 
Sorry, Betsy. Morning, Johnny. I've been talking to the warden to see if I can get you transferred to the library. I'm doing all right where I am. Why won't you let me help you, Johnny? Because I don't need any help. the father trying to sell you? Job in the library. What'd you tell him? I told him no. Well, I don't know, kid. Maybe you better change your mind. Why? Well, he don't be so close in the library. You're out of here all day and you got lots of time to yourself. If I had half of that, what I couldn't do. But all I get is a machine shop and 20 minutes in the yard. Kid, with you outside, kind of getting around, and me in here figuring, there's lots of things could happen. Yeah? Yeah. Hello? Hello. All right, Benson. What do you have? Well, what you said about the library. Does that still go? You bet your life it does. I'll send over the warden's office via transfer right away. Thanks. I'm very glad you've changed your mind, Johnny. Come on. I want to take you to meet your boss. You like that book? It's mighty good reading. I can't read. I just want to look at the illustrations. Oh. Good morning, Father. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> How are you, Father Joe? Good morning, Dad. How are you this morning? Fine, thank you. Dad, this is the man I told you about. Johnny Gates, Dad Schultz. How are you, Johnny? Hello. Well, Dad, the warden's okay this transfer. So I'll turn him over to you. You show him the ropes. I'll take good care of him, Father. Uh, we'll have to make it pretty quick, though, because I'm going out next week. Parole? Me? No, not parole. I'm too mean. I'm fired for good. I've been in here 20 years. 20 years? Yes, sir, 20 years. That's a long time, ain't it? But you know it goes just like that if you're happy. Well, come on, I'll show you them all down here. Hello, boys. Hi, Father. John. Uh, Father, I uh, hear you're kind of short of talent in that show you put on. Yes, I'm afraid we are, Doc. Why? Well, uh, I do some pretty snappy tricks of magic to making things disappear, you know? Yes, I understand. That's why you're here. I'll speak to Bitsy. Thanks, Father. Father Joe. Yes, Red. I just want to tell you I think it's swell of you to get the kid such a good job. Thank you. Yeah, he brings books back to the cell every night. You know, books are a wonderful thing. I didn't know what I was missing. I've been doing a lot of thinking about a lot of things. I got you all wrong. Why, well, you're okay. I'd sure like to have a chance to square myself. Maybe you could get me a job in the library so I can be near the books. And then I could learn things. You're not fooling anybody, Red. Ah, someday I'm gonna take a sock at you. I'll be looking forward to that. There you are, Dan. Release papers, transportation, recommendations. Everything. Thanks very much, sir. This suit's got two pockets in it. <laughs> Here's a little going away present from Father Joe and myself. 
in case you run a little short. No, Warden, I, I, I've saved a little since I've been in here, and I'd rather have to give it to some of the boys out there than you, the person I do, you know. Well, you know how I feel about it, don't you, Father? I know, Dad. Well, goodbye, Dad. Bye, Warden. I, uh, I want to tell you that I've been here, seen six wardens here, but you're the best of all of them. Well, I guess I uh, get a little more added to this, and maybe someday I can buy myself a little place in the country where I can have a little house and where everything will be nice and quiet. <laughs> I, uh, I had a little speech you figured out, Father, but now I don't seem to remember it. I know how you feel, Dad. Well, I guess I better go now. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, my, uh, my garden potter, uh, uh, will you kind of see if you can keep an eye on it? Uh, you know those new marigold plants, they think you an awful lot of water. I'll do it, Dad. I'll water it myself. <laughs> That metal chip over there, the electric eye will pick it up. I got him. What's the idea of bringing that pencil in here? Well, I'm sorry, sir. I forgot. You should know better. Next time, leave it in your cell. Yes, sir. In line. Go ahead. How's the job? Okay. What's the book? American history. Oh, yeah. All about how they stole the land from the Indians. What a racket. You're reading the book. What a laugh. Yeah, I'm uh, kind of brushing up on my education, you know. I ain't had much... If you're on the level, Red, I'm glad to hear it. What are you reading? How to make friends in three easy lessons. Now get out of here. You know, kid, you're pretty smart at that. 
college education and all, it's too bad you and me didn't meet on the outside. If we did, maybe neither one of us would be in here now. What do you mean? Well, you see, kid, all I ever needed was a front. Somebody like you to figure out the smart moves and me to do them. We can get together right now. You having the run of the joint would make things easy. Why, you can drop a few words to the guys once in a while with no trouble at all. Well, we can frame the biggest jailbreak in history. We'd be famous. After we got out, we'd lay low till the heat's off. Then you and me could kind of go into business together. Save your breath, Red. You can count me out. Ah, oh, sir, that's the way it is, huh? All right, stay here. Wait till some guard decides he don't like your pan and frames you. I thought you were smart. I was gonna take you with me when I go out of here. You're not going anywhere. Yeah? If any tip-off spoils my plans, I'll bury this in a squealer if I have to hang for it. Now, take that over. Hey, what's going on in here? I fell out of my bunk. Nice going, kid. Barnes American History, read page Father, I doubt very much if he'll recognize you. Mine seems to be gone completely. If we hadn't found his prison release papers on his body, we wouldn't have known anything about him. He can't answer questions, and he can't talk coherently. He'll know me. Take it. I, I know, Dad. Take me home, will you, Father? Take me home, will you? You just leave it to me. Leave it to me, Dad. Nice tip, Father. Very fine. Prison boards having their powwow. Yes, I know. 
In short, gentlemen, we must economize. The taxpayers expect it and the governor demands it. Today, it is our duty to decide by ways and means to cut the expenses of this institution. Now, to begin with, well, Father Joe. Fine to see you, Father. Fine. I didn't mean to interrupt your speech, Mr. Scott. Oh, that's all right. Quite all right. Anything on your mind? Well, I'm in again with a request. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing new in Father Joe wanting something for those prisoners of his. What is it this time, Father? What I'm asking this time is rather unusual. I've often gone before the parole board to ask that a man be freed. Now I'm before you gentlemen of the prison board to ask that you let a man come back to prison. Well, this is rather unusual. I'll be as brief as possible, gentlemen, but please hear me out. You see, this man lived for 20 years within these walls. 20 years that stripped him of home, family, and friends. The world forgot him. He forgot the world. Forgot its bigness, its noise, its confusion. So when he was released from here, he was unable to cope with it. He just couldn't meet it. Yesterday, this man apparently went insane on a city street. The police put him in the psychopathic ward of a receiving hospital. The doctor says he's not insane, but will be, incurably so, if he's turned loose in our modern chaos. They're planning to put him in a state asylum. I asked them to wait until I could talk to you gentlemen. And what do you want us to do? I want you to give me permission to bring him back here, to the only home he's known for 20 years. And let me tell the world little by little with me until he gets used to it. Sort of a human experiment to advance your theories about the need of uh, preparation camps, I think you call them in your book. If we had such places, I wouldn't have to ask permission to save a man's sanity and his life, because that is what I'm asking. We have no right to grant your request. We are here today under strict orders to cut prison expenses, and you're asking us to bring back a man who has served his full time and had his release. But won't it cost the state just as much to keep him in an asylum? That's not the point. What would the public think of such a procedure? No, Father Joe. When a man has paid his debt to society, he's free. Free, yes. Free to go mad, to steal, to starve. Look out there. What do you see? There go two free men. One of them, Jim Davis, is a parolee. He has friends waiting for him, who have a job ready for him to go to. We'll help him to go straight. But the other one, Harry Johnson, what about him? He just finished a 14-year term. He's paid his debt to society, and he's free. What references has he got? That's not our responsibility. It is your responsibility. You've taken away his name and given it. You've kept him walled up, behind bars and walls. For 14 years, and it's been a machine controlled by a clock, without initiative, without responsibility. And now you're turning him loose, strange world. An ex-convict. An ex-convict with every door of opportunity closed against it. I don't agree with you, Father. You don't. Does this man any citizenship privileges? He join the army, maybe, or even a CCC camp? Will the federal government give him a job? No, my friend. There's not one employer in a hundred will give him a chance. And what happens? He gets hungry. He gets bitter, he gets desperate, and back he comes. That's why prison expenses are high. That's why crime goes on. Please, Father, just what are you getting at? I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to get on my soapbox. I want you to let me bring this man back that I spoke of, Dad Schultz. Well, I think that might be arranged. Now, just a minute. Uh, we'll take it under consideration. Thank you. Uh, this is rather an emergency. We'll decide at once, Father. I'm awfully sorry to have taken so much of your time. Did you hear what they hung on little Jeff today? Five years flat. What was his sentence? One to 14, same as yours. Yeah, they certainly are big heart of that bunch. They give till it hurts. Don't you ever get tired of reading? No. Nope. Well, there must be something to it. I got a hold of that history book of yours the other day, and I'd kind of like to get it and finish reading it. Now, are you feeling all right? Oh, well, sure. What's the use of having a cellmate working in the library if you can't take advantage of it? No 
man just came in, Pat. Thought you might like to see him. I would. New man? Dad Jones. <laughs> Welcome home. I can't find any words to thank for both of you. You don't have to say anything, Dad. It's written all over your face. Welcome home, Dad. Now, you run along with Father Joe, and I'll have Samson pick something up for you. All right. <laughs> Good old dad. Give him a cell of his own and run the place. Well, how can I do that? You figure that out. A cell of his own and throw the key away. Say, Father Joe says you got a book of college songs here. Can I have a loan of it? Over there. The one with the paper cover. Oh, I get it. What makes you think you're going to college? For me? I'm putting a show on here. Songs, dances, and funny stands. Yes, sir. And what a member I've got for the show. What a great idea for a member. If I only get a hold of some hoofers. How about you? Can you do a time step? What's that? Some kind of a convict march? No, no. Look, I'll show you. Here's a time step. Now, here's a break. Here's a step I'm putting in the, putting in the act. Can you yodel? What? All right, I'm just looking for talent, that's all. It's too bad you can't yodel. Because you'd sure make a swell-looking gal. Hi, Missy, how's the show? Oh, come along, Grace. Come along, Grace. Come here. Take a load of this. Look at this. Westview Preview of 1940. Conceived, written, and produced, and directed by number 10290. That's me. Starry number 10290. That's me. Music and dances by number 10290. That's me. Supervised by Father Joe Collins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And 10290. That's me. Swell, huh? Ah, oh, swell. Save me a seat in the front row. Oh, sure. Say, here's one show I won't have to worry about the audience walking out on me. <laughs> Can I look at some of your American history books? We've got a lot of American history books. Which one do you want? Oh, Burns, I guess. What, you too? Here, yeah, just came in. Have you read it? Several times. Say, it must be good. There's a lot of valuable information in it, if that's what you want. That's what I want, all right. Thanks, kid. Thanks a lot. Okay. What do you want? Uh, could I get in? Well, no, I'm not so sure. Letting a dangerous character like you in there is liable to cause a lot of trouble. Just a minute. What do you got in here? Any knives? Guns? Anything of that kind? What are these? Why, them dandelions. I pick little bunch of them over there, and I want to transplant them in my own garden. All right, Dad. And Here don't you, you fellas go picking them to make wine out of either. <laughs> About 3,000 guys in here steaming to get out. And she comes knocking on the door and says, please, can I come in? Here's a black owl kill him. I wrote it. What a show you fellas are going to have. What a show. Yeah, I think we ought to celebrate after the show by going to a nightclub. Yeah, let's get plastered. I'll start out with an old-fashioned. Boy, make mine a long mint julep. <laughs> yeah, make mine a lemonade, because I'm doing the driving. <laughs> oh, that's a corker. <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah, I got the book. The page is missing. What? Somebody must have torn it out. Oh, is that so? Hey, kid. When do I get that book back again I was reading? What book? An American history. That's all. Who's got it? Frankie? Who had it before him? Bell, Troy. 
Well, what do you keep letting it out for? Don't you know I want to finish it? Hello, Red. You got a match, Dell? Sure. What's the matter? You nervous? No, I ain't got nothing to be nervous about. Hello, Pat. Glad you came in. I watch the okay letter for me. Dear mother, just to tell you I'm feeling happy. Oh, you I'm sending a little money every so often. All my love. Who's this one for? Lem Watkins. I have a lot of new friends. He's down in a solitary cellmate. Well, you wouldn't want me to tell his mother that, would you? You see, Pat, his mother's in the poorhouse. And those old ladies are in the habit of reading their son's letters to each other. This way, Slim's mother can show them her boy's letter. I suppose you want me to mail that outside the prison gates? Well, I wouldn't know about that. Well, you don't have to do this, Pat. You're not the only soft-hearted fool in the world, you know. By the way, Father Joe, how's this uh, Cates boy? He's going to be all right. Of course, he's still a little on the defensive, but he did take that library job, and he's doing very well. I'm very glad to hear that. Oh, here you are, Warden. When it's come, trouble. Take a look at this. See anything peculiar about it? You see those funny little markings on there? Yeah. Well, let me read them to you. N-I-G-H-T, Knight, O-F, of S H O W. Show. I can't get the dope on the rest of these markings, but since they mean something. And the book this page came from has traveled this prison plenty. It couldn't be plainer, could it? I'm afraid not, eh? Do you think that Manson's at the bottom of this? Yeah, but it's not his idea. It took a smarter guy than him to figure this one out. Who do you think? The Gates boy. Oh, no, Samson. Don't jump to conclusions. Well, isn't he with him every night to get messages? Isn't he in the library all day to pass them out to the right guys? Why, well, it's a perfect setup. Looks bad for the boy, Father. Have you questioned him? Not yet, Father. But I'm going to. And he'll talk or else. But the thing to let me do now is to arm the guards and call off this show. Poor Betsy. It'll break his heart. He has it more ways than one. This seems to fit in perfectly with their plans, this show business. There won't be any show. But I'm not tipping my hand by announcing that fact. Things must go on as though nothing was wrong. And if by the morning we haven't put our finger on the instigators, I lock up every last man until somebody talks. All right, Warden, let me arm my men. You know, cons can smell trouble when it's in the air. This is bad business, Pat. A convict that may not be even thinking of a break may see a chance to grab a guard's gun, and before he knows it, either he or the guard is dead. Well, it's better than let a gang bust out of here, is it, Warden? You're both right. You tell your men to keep their eyes and ears wide open. See what you get out of that gates, boy. All right, Warden. Here. Here's the one we're using, and it's working out swell. See? When I start tap dancing in the middle of the chorus, that's the one for the whole group to line up for the break and then off the buffalo exit. Oh, it'll kill them. All right, break it up. What do you think, Mrs. Visitor's Day? Get back where you belong. What are you two doing, marking up another book? That's a song book he brought back. So he's in on it, too, huh? And on what? This little book business, you and Red Manson are running around here. I don't know what you're talking about. You know that? Well, I'll tell you. There's too much reading going on around here, and I don't like it. Well, why don't you close up the library? Pretty smart, huh? Let me tell you something. If anything starts around here, you'll be the first one to get it. Red Manson would double-cross his own mother. You're a sucker to string along with him. I'm not stringing along with anybody, and I don't know what this is all about. Well, if you know what's good for you, you better start talking and talk fast. How many is it on this break with you? Who marked that history book? And who are they? I told you I don't know. All right. We got a place for guys who don't know and can't remember. The cons call it the hole. And it's a good place to think things over. Because thinking's all there is to do. In fact, all there's room to do. And it's dark, too, to help you concentrate. Do you think you'll like it? Or do you feel more talkative? I can't tell you something I don't know. 
All right. You asked for it. Get going. I said get going. Juniors look pretty good, don't they? These colored ones here, those are asters. Yeah. I got some roses coming, too, if they ever get here. Well, I think you've done wonders, Dad. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. hey, sir, these are imported marigolds, these here. Marigolds? Well, I thought those were onions, Dad. Oh, you know better than that, Father. <laughs> Father Joe. What is it, Betsy? They've taken the kid in the library to the hole. How do you know? Well, I'm in the library, see? Telling the kid about the show. Samson barges in all steamed up and lights into us. Then he kicks me out. After a bit, I see the kid heading for the, down below. What's up, Father? Why is Samson so at me? I ain't done nothing. I'm sure you haven't, Betsy. You go on about your business. I got some white Orlandos over there. You want to come and take a look at them, Father? Uh, I'll see them later, Dad. I'm sure they're beautiful. Hello, Johnny. You came down here to work on me, you're wasting your time. I didn't come down here to work on you, you know that. But I don't think you're mixed up in this business. But I think you might know who is. I've got nothing to tell you. I don't want you to tell me anything, son. But if you have any information, I beg of you, go to the warden and prevent wholesale murder. Because that's what a break will mean, wholesale murder. I've got nothing to say. For heaven's sake, Johnny, don't let this thing happen if you can stop it. I told you you're wasting your time, I don't know anything. All right, son. Keep your chin up. Don't let this place throw you. I still have faith in you. <laughs> That's fine. That'll get me right out of here, won't it? a bunch of caged animals just before a storm broke? Restless, uneasy? Well, this whole place is just like that tonight. Why, even you're feeling it. If we're not prepared by the time we let them out tomorrow morning, I'll not answer for the consequences. It's a pretty tough decision to make, using guns on unarmed men. But are they unarmed? Of course, I've combed this place from stem to stern. But it's a cinch these cones are not making a break without something besides their fists. Let's not kid ourselves, Warden. Can I come in, Pat? Certainly. I'm glad you came, Father. I've just about decided to give Eddie's way about arming the guns. Well, I know you wouldn't if there's any other way. But I'd like to try something first. Young Gates has been in solitary for some time. I was wondering, maybe you'd try and get something out of him. You know better than that, Pat. Anything you might say to me would go no further. You're a big help. The kid's in it up to his neck. Do you think so, Father John? I'm sure he's not. However, if I'm wrong, can't do any harm where he is. You said it. And maybe throw a monkey wrench into their plans. I want to know those plans. Put Gates back in the cell with Red Manson right away. Put him in the machine shop with him tomorrow. And transfer all those that you suspect in there, too. Then if they start something, we've got him. All right, Warden. I'll have Gates moved up right away. Then I'll go over to the arsenal and see about arming all the men. Wait a minute. Can't take a chance like that. But here's what we can do. Arm the guards in the cell block. The two guards in the mess hall before we let the men out in the morning. We let them out in groups. Four guards to a group. To stay with them until we lock them up again. No recreation. Is that clear? That's clear, Warden. I'll report to you later, sir. I 
I wish I had his slant on things. It would be a lot easier. On you or on the prisoners? On me? And on a situation like this. Sometimes I feel like I'm just banging my head against a stone wall. Well, even a stone wall gives, ultimately. I wonder if mine will last that long. Look at your last efforts. You've done all in your power to help young Gates. And what has it got you? I still don't believe he's bad. Hey, Red. Brought your cellmate back. Tough down there, huh? I knew you wouldn't squeal. Why didn't you tell me what was in that book I was passing out? Well, I wasn't sure of you then, but I am now. Lay down and stretch out. Go on, take my book. out of here with us when we make the break. since this warden took over. So what? That wise to something. It's a page from that book. That dirty stool pigeon. I'll get him. breakfast, they'll be moved in groups to their work as you ordered. They'll work straight through until dinner time, without recreation. Then we'll lock them up. There goes the machine shop group now. Mr. Red Manson and all his buddies. I have Stone Dell in with him, too. You'll rescue his life if they suspect his part in all this. Oh, uh, they'll never get to him there. And he may spot things even the guard might miss. I don't like the stool pigeon system. It's bad business. I think it's pretty good business. Where'd we be sitting if Dell hadn't tipped us off about that book? One missing. Who? Fitzy. How can I give a show tonight without a dress rehearsal? Where are my actors? They're in the laundry. What? And you're on your way to the machine shop. But why? Maybe you've been reading too many books. Come on. Is 
yours. Put them to work. Yes, sir. Get that Perlman scoop and paint up around the machine. Send all but me to the laundry. The show must be off. Stick around and we'll put on a real show for you. period. We might have a little trouble when they find out we're locking them up without any. So I move the machine shop last. Give me a white rag and a stick. They're shooting in the machine shop. Double the men in the yard. Flag of truce. All right, Red, I'm listening. Tell the warden to send a truck over here. And tell the warden to come over himself. He's going to ride out of here with us. If you don't, I'll kill a guard every five minutes. Samson. Captain, I got a message to the warden from Red. Red says to send over a truck. Then you come over and ride out with them. Or they'll kill a guard every five minutes. They don't dare. 
The answer is no. Hey, Red, take your answer. They just tossed out Harris' body. Well, Sandy Harris. I can't stand by here and watch him murdering innocent men. That's the chance they took when they signed up. I'm going down there. You can't do that, Warden. You can't leave those murders out of that gate. You bumped off for your trouble. What do you want me to do? Call out the militia? Let me have it my way. That's what I'm here for. The answer is no. and I'm going to dynamite that building right, right. right. You can't do that. You stay out of this, Father Joe. Oh, Give me five minutes to talk to those men. They like me, they know me. Perhaps I can do something with them. Don't kid yourself, Father. Red Manson hates you. He'd kill you as quick as anyone what else. What have I got to lose? Miss Sampson, Father Joe's going across the yard. I want him covered from every angle. It's good and close. I don't want to miss. That you, Red? Yeah. I want to talk to you. I'm glad to see you, Father. I don't think most of you boys are mixed up in this. I know you're not, Johnny. Bill? They're all in on it. What's your proposition? There's no proposition, Red. The warden's given me five minutes to try and bring you to your senses. You can't get away with this. Don't you know that? They're going to blow up this building. A lot of you will lose your lives. That means that you'll have more blood on your hands, Red, and on your soul. And what's he going to get you? You won't get out of here. Use your senses, man. Is that all you gain? And what are you gaining by it? You're killing a lot of men who never harmed you. Boys, don't listen to this man. Shut up. I'll do the talking now. I don't like you. I never did like you. You're the last guy in the world I ever figured could do a fatal for me. But you're going to do one now. You're going to turn around and walk out of here, and we're going to walk out with you. Right through the gate. The warden's your friend. They won't shoot at you. And if they start shooting at us, you'll get this right in the back. Open up, honey. Don't do it, man. You're having a chance. Believe me. That's that trap. Pete, you're up for parole. Use your head. Why do you be out of here in a year? Turn around and get gone. No, Red. You've still got time to save lives in your own soul. Will you do it? I'm giving you three to turn around. Mark. Boys, this man is only using you. All of you. Two. Don't waste your lives for a coward. This man's only tough when he has a gun. All right, you ass sport. Johnny. He broke it up. This will mean parole for him. Why, right, of course. Hospital. Well, there's another one you've straightened out. Yes. Get out of here. You dirty murdering. Ed, don't do that. 
That's not necessary. All right, Father Joe. I told you that boy Johnny wasn't bad. And he's all right. Tell me, Father Joe, why did you stop him from manhandling Red? Well, I've got until they hang him. 